by now you should have the Heroku command line installed on your local computer. So we're actually ready to go to the next step, which is checking to make sure Heroku is set up and then actually start getting our project going. Um, so I'm gonna open up terminal. And of course I have my old project running that's local. In this one, I actually am going to download the actual project from GitHub and then I'm going to start from scratch there so you guys can actually see it as if you were using a different project, although we're going off of the same project. So you don't have to do what I'm about to do as far as downloading is concerned, but I'm going to do it so it shows you that you guys can do it as well at any time with the same app. Um, so let's go ahead and open up a new window here and I'm gonna change into the desktop and I'm gonna make a new directory in here called cur and I'm gonna change into cur, all right? And in here I'll say git, I'll just write git, G-I-T. Um, git is that version control that we mentioned last time. Um, if this does not, if it doesn't say anything about git, then you did not install the Heroku command line correctly because the Heroku command line will have git in there. Like Git will be a part of the Heroku command line interface. It's definitely one of those installation processes. If for some reason that fails, we can actually download Git by Googling download Git. And you could go to git-scm and download Git here. So then we could write just Git and this stuff will actually work. So really quickly, what is Git? If you go on github.com, GitHub is a place to store your Git repositories. A Git repository is really just a history of your code. So every time that you make changes to your code and you add it to Git, those changes are tracked and then those tracked changes are then in what's called commits that allows you to see previous history of your code. So you can actually jump into previous history of code by looking at our code on github.com slash coding for entrepreneurs slash try Django uh, 110 or all that. Of course, join cfe.com slash GitHub is a faster way to get there. And we can jump in here. And if I scroll down at the lecture code, you've probably already seen this, but if I click on it, this code right here is actually different than the code that's on the main repository up here. Because every time we finish a video, we update that code. So then the code on here is going to be just slightly different. And that's really cool because of what we're about to do, which is getting this code going. But we wanna make sure that Git is there by writing out Git. The other thing that we wanna make sure is there is Heroku. If I type out Heroku, I should see something like this. I might see additional installation stuff, that's fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and type in um, my email address, which is hello at joincfe.com, and then the password that I used. And of course it's hidden and I'm pressing enter after typing it. Oops, got the wrong password there. Let's try that again and hello at joincfe.com. Oops, that's not the correct one. It's hello at teamcfe.com. Let's try that one more time. And now I'm logging in, cool. So I've, I've been able to log in successfully and now I can actually work with the Heroku command line. Um, I can see all of my apps with Heroku apps dash dash all, as it says here, I don't have any apps. I can see add-ons with add-ons. I don't have any add-ons. This also can be seen by logging into Heroku. You can see this stuff here, right? This is where all of these things would actually exist um, as far as our apps are concerned. Now, I'm not gonna create a new app in the dashboard itself. I'm gonna do it using the command line. It's a little bit easier to do it using the command line, so that's what I'm gonna end up doing. So now let's actually jump back into GitHub, and I'm gonna go ahead and download our Try Django 1.10 project. I'm gonna go into line 34, or lecture 34. I'm gonna click on that one, because this is going to be the project that I actually wanna work with, um, or at least the version of the project that I wanna work with because the later versions are, might have some different things that I've done, um, but at least at 34, that's where we're at right now. So that's what I'm gonna go off of. And what I'm gonna do is instead of cloning it, I'm just gonna download the zip file. If you know Git or you're more comfortable with using Git, you absolutely can use Git, but everyone else, downloading zip is fairly straightforward. I just click on that and it's gonna download the code for me and it's downloading this version of the code. Notice the URL is slightly different. It has the commit log ID. 
And if I go back here, the code won't download quite the same. So if we look into our downloads, we see that it also had that same sort of thing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this. And now inside of this code, I see all of this stuff here. Um, there's a couple things that I still don't have that I'll probably want. So let's go ahead and bring uh, open up our cur file. So inside of desktop, we've got cur here. I'm going to bring over SRC and just SRC. So now I've got that original source or that new source that we've had from before. The other stuff I don't necessarily need, but something I do need to do inside of cur is I need to come in there. So if I list everything out or PWD or DIR, if you're on windows, we see where we are. I'm going to make a virtual environment in here again, because I like to do that for every individual project. And that virtual environment is now inside of the cur app or the cur folder. So if I activate it, Windows uh, users have a little bit different activation, which is scripts slash activate. So now that it's activated, but noted by cur, of course, that's the f directory name that the virtual environment is in. I can now actually try and run my project. So if I go to CD source and then Python manage.py run server, I get could not import Django, right? Blah, blah, blah about Python path. Well, if I do pip freeze, I don't actually have anything installed. So going back into my virtual environment and back into the main folder for try Django 1.10, I see that there's this requirements file. So I can go to that requirements file and I can either download it or just copy these things. So I'm just gonna copy one by one and do pip install this and then copy this one and pip install that there we go now we can run the server and we should see well our old port is already in use so i'm going to go ahead and close out that old project run the server again and we refresh and we still have the same stuff working okay so why did i do this exactly um, that's because of git so now what i want to do is turn this into a project that is in git so if i do git status there's no GitHub repository. Um, so that's where we're gonna leave it. And we're gonna then now move to the next step, which is deploying Python and Django apps on Heroku. So um, this is, where we're gonna be going off of the actual um, article that they have on Heroku. We'll do this step-by-step step in the next one. If you have any questions on what we did here or why we did it, let us know. The main thing here is just to show you how you could use a different project's code or this project's code and then launch it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.